Thanks for listening to the Get Over Yourself podcast, brought to you by Carol Fit Stationary Bike Program, 8-Minute Workouts to Get Super Fit, Perfect Keto, the cleanest, highest potency ketone supplements, MOFO, Male Optimization Formula with Organs to Boost Testosterone, Let's Get Checked, At Home Testing Kits, try LGC.com. Almost Heaven, beautiful compact home use sauna kits. Brad's Macadamia Masterpiece, the mind-blowing nut butter blend. And check out bradkerns.com slash shop, my personal selection of favorite products for health, fitness, and peak performance. And here we go with the show. Let's do things that are sustainable, fun, and feel natural and easy to maintain. That's what Johnny G says, my main man. Uh, the creator of spinning, only things that are natural and easy to maintain are healthy. If you make a solemn vow to not open up your text messages or your emails for the first 90 minutes of the day, that is a really winning strategy right there. Be okay annoying people uh, by not being super responsive. It's time for MoFo Mission Assignment number seven. Take control. Take control. Take control. Overcome nonstop digital stimulation and distraction by focusing, prioritizing, and powering down with unwavering discipline like a real MoFo. Implement proactive daily rituals such as a morning exercise routine before you reach for the bloody screen and kick into shallow reactive brain function. Daily exposure to cold makes you more resilient to all other forms of life stress. So we're going to put into place some winning rituals and behaviors that we will wire into habit and also put up our defenses, our discipline against the non-stop assault of information technology into our brains, the hyper-connectivity and multitasking that it facilitates. Okay, here we go. I've recorded numerous breather shows on the topic of uh, tech dangers, tech addiction. So I'd love for you to go bounce over and listen to some of those to go into detail. One of the breather shows was titled Prevent Technology from Hijacking Your Mind. And this is where the essence of the show was that we must acknowledge the addictive properties and our draw to novel stimulation in our environment to get that dopamine hit in the brain, that reward, that instant gratification, that pleasure that occurs when we react to the ding of a text message or whatever other novel stimulation hits us that breaks our concentration from doing that deep work. And that's the title of Cal Newport's wonderful book, Deep Work. I did a whole breather show covering insights from his book. I'd love for you to listen to that one. Uh, Cal Newport has some great suggestions to uh, actualize the highest expression of your talents by teaching your body and developing discipline and rituals to focus and bring out the best in you rather than just reacting all day to dings and inbox messages. Uh, I remember my show with Seth Godin, the productivity marketing expert, and I asked him, uh, I thought was a thoughtful question. Hey, Seth, you know, when I'm trying to write a book or focus on peak performance tasks and the constant pull of email is so distracting, what are some of your suggestions and tips to help overcome that uh, pension for distraction? action. And he said, turn that shit off and get the work done, man. (laughs) That was it. No need to elaborate, no need to candy coat it. So I guess this uh, show could be a few minutes long telling you to just turn that shit off and get the work done. But let's get into some memorable tips and takeaways uh, that we can pull from other shows. And then, of course, implementing the winning rituals will help you uh, sort of uh, default into success because you have these things going for you. You could call them built in default protection mechanisms against getting sucked into hyperconnectivity, overstimulation, distraction. Uh, For example, my morning flexibility mobility routine, which you can see on YouTube. And I'm making a day in the life video uh, so you can see all my tips and tricks of stuff I do. But especially the morning routine has been so valuable to me and it keeps me away from uh, whatever the alternatives might be if I didn't have this thing rock solid into habit and so important to me and so familiar that if I uh, delay it or um, 
miss it. It feels really weird until I get the job done. Yeah. So in Deep Work, the book by Cal Newport, uh, he had a bunch of sections with summary tips. So we'll just cover those quickly and you can listen to the whole show. Uh, and one of his tips for uh, facilitating deep work was to schedule time in, uh, put it on your calendar for faux real, uh, maybe first thing in the morning, because that's the best time for the brain. It's fresh. The decks are clear. And if you uh, make a solemn vow to not open up your text messages or your emails for the first 90 minutes of the day, that is a really winning strategy right there. Uh, my main man, Andre Obradovic, life coach in Australia. We did a great show together on the podcast a while back. And in our personal lives, he's been a big help to me. And one of the things he did when I was complaining, just like I complained to Seth Godin about all the distractions, I said, man, I'm on a book deadline right now. And all this stuff seems to get in the way, all these real life matters. Uh, what kind of tips do you have for me? And he says, here's what I want you to do. Can you take two hours of your morning uh, and commit to the most important thing you have to do in your life, in your workday? And I said, yeah, I think I can handle two hours. <laughs> you know, Oftentimes we think of how do we make our eight hour day more productive and then uh, an hour slips away and we feel bad about it. But come on, let's do some bite-sized goals here. So he said, why don't you do this? Uh, get your two hours in and then email me before 12 noon your time. And the subject line says, I effing did it today, mate. And that's it. No, no body of the email, just the subject line. So once I do it, I can check in with him. And the expectation was that he would get an email every single day for the next 30 days. I freaking did it again, mate. You know what I mean? Have someone uh, to be accountable to. Uh, and you can be accountable to yourself as well. You can send an email to yourself that says, I effing did it today, mate and go from there. So that scheduled time is really useful, really effective, really important. Uh, Jim Collins, the best-selling author of the great business and productivity books like Good to Great, uh, he was on a podcast and uh, described how his goal and his objective every year is to spend 50% of his workday in creative, uh, strategic, high-level thinking mode. I forget the exact term he used for it. We can call it deep work in honor of Cal Newport's book. But Jim Collins is going for that 50% score, which seems reasonable. But if you think about it, or if you tracked your own time, uh, maybe that would be a difficult objective to reach when all these little things get in the way. Uh, professionals who bill by the hour, accountants, lawyers, architects, uh, they have a much better uh, performance record here because they definitely have to account for their time and they're hitting stopwatches. They're using the software uh, to know which client to bill and know when to push the stop button if someone comes into their office and interrupts them. And I know uh, junior lawyers in the big firms, uh, they are expected to bill 2,000 hours a year to justify their healthy salary. And if a lot of that's frittered away from YouTube time, oh boy, you can't very well be billing the client for that. So, uh, Jim Collins talks about how he has uh, obsessive tracking of this creativity time ratio on a spreadsheet every single day. So increasing your awareness of your penchant for distractibility and how much time it takes. I would bet that we all underestimate how much time our distractibility takes when a neighbor stops by or when I'm heading out to throw out the garbage. I'm in the middle of an important work assignment. Uh, I get talking with the neighbor. Uh, we go into their house to look at their new granite countertops. Then I come back and forget that I haven't watered the uh, front patio yet and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden an hour goes by when you thought it was going to be a one minute break to go throw away the garbage. Okay. So schedule time in on your calendar. Uh, keep track of your creativity time or your productivity time so you can increase your awareness of uh, what you're when you're not spending good time. Uh, third is be okay annoying people uh, by not being super responsive. Ooh, that's a funny one, huh? And interestingly, uh, social media itself and email is predicated on uh, reciprocation, right? That's the whole idea here is that they have a reply button built into our email uh, window. And social media is all about the confirmation, getting the likes, the views, counting up the number of people you engage with. And we don't have to necessarily 
make a blanket condemnation of social media and the like buttons or the email inbox being such a distraction. Of course, these are wonderful tools when used appropriately. Uh, but that idea of being okay, not being super responsive, not being all things to all people immediately, uh, that's a really nice concept. Uh, in Cal Newport's book, Deep Work, he talks about a, I believe, a fellow professor who, uh, knowing that your main objective as a professor and your rise through the rankings of academia and gaining tenureship and all that great stuff uh, is largely predicated on the great work that you publish, the studies uh, that you get published in prestigious journals along with your teaching assignments and whatever else. And so uh, he has this one professor that prides himself on being a total flake and saying no as much as possible to all invitations for uh, being on boards or advisory committees or it being, uh, you know, engaging uh, live with people if there's going to be a meeting or something. And he puts out more papers than all of his peers and has a fast rising career accordingly because he's focused on the highest expression of his talents, the so-called deep work. Be okay annoying people, number three. Number four, have distinct shut down times and boundaries for your engagement with technology. And this is obviously at the end of the workday when you can ceremonially flip that laptop lid shut or hit the shut down button on your desktop device or whatever it really means, uh, turn on a dime and walk out of your home office or walk out of your uh, workplace and uh, be done with it. So that's uh, really important to have a distinct shutdown time at the end of the day rather than having that mobile device extend your workday into what should be the leisure hours. But I'm also going to argue that you should have these boundaries in place throughout the workday so that uh, your availability on the telephone or on the email uh, is has distinct hours instead of just being constantly available, uh, constantly answering, constantly responding. So I'm working on that myself, man. Set aside those times where you can be deeply immersed in deep work. You know, what's so effective for me, especially when I'm writing books, which is the deepest I can think of, is I purposely find my Myself in areas where there's no internet connection, like a parking lot or somewhere outside of a comfortable home environment where I have all the technology at my fingertips and the, the browser window open in case I want to look up something. Uh, but there's something to be said for the inconvenience of, let's say, sitting in a car that's uh, growing hotter by the minute if I'm out in a parking lot during the, uh, the sunny times of day and year. Uh, but having a little bit of discomfort where I'm really focused on getting the work done and working really efficiently uh, has, has really been a nice thing. Okay, finally, number five, quote, inspiration is for amateurs. Just focus in and do the work. So a lot of times we're trying to uh, create these ideal circumstances. Uh, you can think of the dreamy image of the writer who goes off to the mountain cabin and uh, chops up some wood, lights a nice fire, brews some tea, and sits down at the uh, typewriter. Never a computer, right? It's always a cool typewriter for those real writers. And that's when they can uh, write their masterpiece novel or what have you. Uh, but I think we kind of get in our own way sometimes uh, thinking that everything has to be perfect. And that's why I reference my example of of sitting in a hot parking lot, let's say waiting for Mia Moore to come out of her office or something. And I don't mind waiting for really even a long time because I'm getting work done and it's not the most convenient place where I can uh, step away and go make myself a delicious, wonderful meal or distract myself in other ways with home chores. And I think all of us who have been obligated to work at home now have to uh, be much better uh, drawing those boundaries between <laughs> the necessary chores that are in our eyesight and getting that deep work done. So I guess that inspiration is for amateurs part also, or mostly applies to your mood and your uh, creative inspiration. And however you're feeling on a certain day, uh, maybe sometimes you don't really feel like it, but you still sit yourself down in front of the screen and get some work done. And I particularly appreciate the advice given to uh, writers and aspiring writers, uh, whereby uh, this is not any particular person, but a lot of people say that, um, you know, the, the greatest cure for writer's block is to start uh, typing out something and uh, get going, whether it's crappy or not. Oh, okay. And Lamott comes to mind. Great writer uh, with many bestsellers. One of her books titled Bird by Bird is particularly directed toward aspiring writers. And one of the chapters is titled Shitty First Drafts. 
where she's talking about just getting something on paper, reading it. It's terrible, but it leads you in the next step down the journey rather than sitting there staring at a blank screen or fussing with that fire in your mountain cabin because it's not burning perfectly before you can uh, get down to the business of writing. Okay, so the assignments on number seven, taking control. Let's start with putting into place some winning lifestyle behaviors that will make you less susceptible to hyperconnectivity and distraction. And one of them is to commit to a deliberate, proactive morning routine. My favorite recommendation is the flexibility, mobility uh, sequence of exercises that I display on YouTube. And that is paired with a uh, chest freezer cold plunge. So that cold exposure with so many hormonal and cognitive and intangible benefits of making you more focused and disciplined to all other forms of stress and distraction throughout the day. Because if I can uh, make myself jump into a chest freezer filled with 38 degree water uh, and, you know, stick to that plan, no matter what, not if I, whether I feel like it or not, but just doing it without thinking about it and wiring that into habit uh, by definition or hope I would be more resilient against, let's say, things like the distraction of the email inbox or the pull of watching a YouTube video rather than uh, finishing uh, the last few uh, slides of your presentation or what have you. So uh, you can do whatever works for you. But if it's something that's uh, a, a template routine that you do the same exact thing every single day. That's a really important element of it because you don't want to have to exercise your creative energies in this area, nor apply willpower or decision-making uh, skills. You just get up and do it in a robotic manner, and that will sort of uh, make a statement that you are all about being proactive rather than just being a, a victim of uh, technology, hyperconnectivity, distractibility. So, if it's five minutes that you can start with, the major important thing is that you commit to doing it every single day, no matter what. So please don't set your sights too high and say, I'm going to get up and go to the gym at 5.30 every single morning, and three days a week, I'm going to do the boot camp class, and the other two days, I'm going to go work uh, on the mat by myself and do uh, some yoga. Uh, that might be a little too daunting. <laughs> I recommend getting more sleep. Uh, so for all of you that are seen in the gym at 5.30 in the morning, hopefully all y'all in there went to bed at 8.30 or 9. Otherwise, holy crap, um, let's check back in five years. Let's do things that are sustainable, fun, and feel natural and easy to maintain. That's what Johnny G says, my main man, uh, the creator of spinning, uh, fitness celebrity and legendary ultra endurance athlete. Uh, only things that are natural and easy to maintain are healthy. So we want to get healthy habits. One of them, how about a five minute morning stretching awakening routine? You can do the yoga sun salute uh, sequence of exercises that's easy to find on YouTube, but something where you get out of bed and do something advocating for yourself and your health and your well-being and your balanced lifestyle. So that is a great start to show that you're in control rather than ad week survey suggests that 84% of Americans reach for their mobile device as their first, very first act of the morning. So maybe we can step out of being uh, one of those 84 percentile and say that you do something different. Okay. And I'll tell you what happens, the magic of what happens when you wire something like this into habit and my own uh, mobility, flexibility, core strengthening routine that I started in 2017 because I wanted to kind of uh, improve my fitness base that I launch all my formal workouts from, uh, reduce my risk of injury by becoming a little more flexible. So you can see me, if you type in Brad Kern's morning routine on YouTube, you can see me doing these hamstring kickouts and frog legs while my legs are raised off the ground, doing a core strengthening, doing a few yoga moves in there, like the yoga wheel, the extremely difficult stretch that you can have your um, hands and feet on the ground forming an arch like the St. Louis Gateway Arch. Uh, so that's my morning routine that I started. I haven't missed a single day in almost four years now. Uh, but interestingly enough, when I started it, I thought it was a five minute routine. And then when we filmed it uh, for the for the YouTube production, it turns out it takes about 12 minutes. So I had this super enjoyable, satisfying and uh, beneficial morning routine that seemed like five minutes, but was 12 minutes. And what I've done over time is I've added 
some exercises to the template to increase the degree of difficulty and the benefits, the more stuff I do. And so today, amazingly, the morning routine, the sequences that I do every single day, the same thing, uh, takes a minimum of 35 minutes. And it's quite difficult. Um, I'll show you on my uh, Day in the Life Brad Kearns video. And it took oh, some time to work up to, to be able to accomplish this stuff every single day, whether I feel like it or not. But it's such a great centerpiece of my fitness experience. Even if I don't do much the rest of the day, it's still a pretty darn good 35-minute workout every single morning. And what I often do is roll into a proper workout right after that. So maybe I'll step into uh, the fitness center that is my living room and go on and do another 15, 20, 25 minutes of strength training. And then, man, I knocked that knock that objective off for the entire day. But I know that I can count on myself no matter what. And boy, that's a huge difference from frittering away uh, every single morning with uh, reaching for the phone and seeing what's new in the world of uh, COVID news or politics or sports or things that you can catch up on later or even uh, miss out on and not really miss out on much overall in life. And so pairing that with the cold plunge and finishing off with that cold plunge, oh, the hormonal benefits are amazing. I detail that in an entire full-length show about cold therapy, uh, working on a book on the subject too, so more fun stuff coming there. But briefly, uh, the prominent Finnish study that's referenced often uh, revealed that a, as little as a 20-second immersion into 40-degree Fahrenheit water, so yes, pretty cold and uh, hard to find that outside of dumping ice into your bathtub or getting a chest freezer or going to uh, an outdoor body of water at the right time of year in your environment, just a 20 second immersion into 40 degree water results in a 200 to 300% spike in the mood elevating hormone norepinephrine and the spike lasts for up to one hour. And I think we can all reference that invigorating, refreshing feeling we get when we jump into the icy river when we're camping and we shriek and jump out right away and warm up in a nice towel, but you feel alive and invigorated for a long time after afterward. So if you want to take this as one of your suggestions to take control of your life, remember that's the title of this assignment. Uh, how about starting with a cold shower? Pretty simple. So if you just get in your usual morning shower, uh, whatever temperature, warm temperature you like, but then over the final 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes, if you're feeling uh, motivated, uh, make a commitment to grab that handle and turn it to full blast cold. And as you do so, or right before, I'd like you to initiate a sequence of deep diaphragmatic breaths and maintain a total uh, commitment to maintain control of your breath throughout your cold water experience. And when you can maintain control of your breath, you will override that initial uh, shock panic response uh, I think it's called the mammalian dive reflex, where you uh, immediately uh, shift into a, a fight or flight uh, extreme reaction, usually accompanied with hyperventilating and that panic breathing that will usually cause you to turn the handle back over to warm or jump out of your friend's chest freezer or jump out of the river and get right back into a towel. So we're far more resilient than we can imagine when it comes to cold exposure. And we've completely disregarded this in modern life as we warm up with uh, indoor circulated air and our uh, warm clothing if we are going outside, cranking up the heater in the car as we drive along. And it's really, really healthy to uh, reintroduce these hormetic stressors that have been part of human life uh, since the beginning of time and have made us the strong and resilient creatures that we are today. So a little bit of cold exposure, it's called therapeutic cold exposure. It's not called torturous cold exposure, right? So I'm not talking about getting into some chest freezer and shivering and feeling miserable. And I make a huge point of that in the video. You can uh, look on YouTube, Brad Kern's chest freezer, cold therapy, cold plunge. And I'm talking about how I always get out when I, uh, before I experience that sensation of shivering or true discomfort. And in fact, when I'm able to maintain control of my breathing, I'm not really cold inside the tub. 
and nor when I get out, I feel refreshed and energized. So it's a big difference from maybe what it seems if you're watching the video and you haven't really tried it yourself. So try it in the shower and see how powerful breath control is and you can really uh, get it going. And the science is so strong that these brief bouts of cold exposure have a profound influence on your overall health. I heard Ben Greenfield on a recent uh, Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast uh, talk about his experience with the continuous glucose monitor. And he contends that his four minute morning cold water immersion had a greater impact or a, a greater benefit to uh, stabilizing gl blood glucose throughout the day than anything else he could think of. Incredible. Uh, there's plenty of research to validate the benefits of cold exposure. You can go to Dr. Rhonda Patrick's foundmyfitness.com website and download a free 26-page uh, PDF with a lot of scientific detail about the studies they've done. Uh, my book's going to be really user-friendly and easy read to talk about these scientific benefits in user-friendly form so you can really kind of grasp what's going on when you jump in the water. Uh, but you get this wonderful anti-inflammatory benefit. It provides an immediate and sustained boost in immune function. It turbocharges fat burning for fat reduction, and this can be a great way to help you break through weight loss plateaus, uh, but we'll do a whole nother show to detail that because uh, it's not as easy as it might sound. You might have seen these articles where it says cold exposure uh, stimulates uh, the activation of uh, brown fat, and then uh, that activates more burning of body fat, but it's also believed that cold exposure can spike appetite. So what you have to do is kind of uh, a strategy here where you're you're going to override any appetite spikes, do that therapeutic cold exposure in the name of dropping excess body fat. And it takes uh, some focus and discipline and resilience, but it is, I think, a secret weapon, especially when you're trying everything else uh, like dietary adherence and a good exercise program. So that's the uh, plug for the morning routine. And talking about the evening, there's a lot of uh, validation to the idea that you want to spend your final evening hours away from screen stimulation. If you are introducing excess artificial light and digital stimulation after dark, you are interfering with the very delicate hormonal circadian influenced processes that help you get to bed, fall asleep gracefully, and cycle optimally through all the stages of sleep such that you awake and refreshed and energized near sunrise every single morning. Yeah, I know it's a pretty big dream, uh, but if that's not you, you're not that morning person, that early bird, let's look at the level of artificial light and digital stimulation after dark. And boy, if we can just kind of tone down and mellow out our home environment using the orange light bulbs, using the uh, blue blocking eyewear, the orange or yellow colored lenses, uh, using candlelight, using the uh, Himalayan salt lamps, you know, just mellowing out the experience in your home in the final two hours before bedtime and doing calm, quiet, mellow activities like live interpersonal socializing, talking, playing cards, reading, drawing, doing an art project, doing something besides the hyper stimulation of engaging with the screen. And if you're going to do some passive entertainment like watching a show, that's arguably less stressful and less disruptive than actually doing work and cranking through uh, your email inbox that you fell behind on during the day. So we want to have a nice, mellow evening experience that's all about taking control of the other things that can come into play and mess with your sleep. And boy, what a wonderful assignment to tackle. And not that big a deal. It's just about using that power down button. Uh, we got a great tip from Dr. Kelly Starrett in our podcast when I thought we were going to talk about his area of expertise, like full mobility, flexibility, injury prevention. He's the king of the CrossFit scene. And uh, the readystate.com is his wonderful website all about optimizing human movement. But he was really fixated on uh, taking control of our environment and making win a winning environment that sets you up for success. Some of his great tips like plug your phone in outside your bedroom so you're not tempted. Just make that your habit. And then it's much easier to say, yeah, I avoided screen last night and this morning because the thing wasn't in my face. So, you know, don't make it so hard on yourself and tempt yourself on those dopamine hits. Uh, he also mentioned uh, for those with families, uh, walking your kid to school and putting in that, that uh, daily uh, walking objective as a family. 
And oh, what's that? Oh, you live too far away. It's a couple freeway exits over to your kid's elementary school. All right. Well, park your car a mile away from the buddy school, walk your kid in and walk back to the car. Guess what? You'll uh, miss out on the conga line of carpool drop-offs anyway. A win-win all around. That concludes the MoFo mission number seven. Take control. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the show. We would love your feedback at getoveryourselfpodcast at gmail.com. And we would also love if you could leave a rating and a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. I know it's a hassle. You have to go to desktop iTunes, click on the tab that says ratings and reviews, and then click to rate the show anywhere from five to five stars. And it really helps spread the word so more people can find the show and get over themselves because they need to. Thanks for doing it.